uh, now I'll do a, we'll do early stopping where again we'll get into some of this eigenvector analysis. So let's see that. So the idea behind early stopping is actually very simple. In principle, what needs to be done? So we know that this that this trend exists between the training error and the test error, right? So in practice, what you will do is you will continue to optimize the training error, the empirical training error, which is the sum of the errors on the m training points. You'll also continuously keep track of the validation error. That means the same quantity you will compute over the n validation or test points. Even gets this, you can do this and you are actually doing this in your back propagation assignment. You are keeping track of the training error as well as the validation error. And you keep plotting them, okay. And you keep running for various epochs and keep something known as a patience parameter P, okay. So if you are at the 20th epoch and if your patience parameter P is equal to phi, then just do a check whether in the phi, last phi epochs has my validation error ever gone down or it has been staying the same or has it been increasing, okay. Now I will give you a condition that it was either staying the same or it was actually increasing. Is this good or bad? What does it tell you? While your training error was of course decreasing, right? the more you train your training error will keep going down. So what does this tell you? It is just overfitting. You are fitting the training error, you are just making it 0 or as close to 0 as possible, possible but that is not helping your validation error. The validation error is either worst case increasing or remaining the same, right. So this is a very commonly used trick which is known as early stopping. You keep this patience, patience parameter and you make sure that if you have crossed this patience, right and the patience here is that I was waiting for the validation error to go down but it is not going down for some p epochs. So no point in continuing training anymore, I will just stop it. Does that make sense? Okay. So uh, and this can also be used in conjunction with other regularizers, right. So in the quiz also we had this question, okay sorry for bringing up the quiz, but we also had this question where you have the sparsity regularization and I was asking whether I can add the L2 regularization along with it, right. So these regularizations can be added or used in conjunction, it is not that you can only use one of them. So early stopping is a way of regularizing, but you could also use it in conjunction with L2 regularization or any other regularization technique that you would want, right. So but how does this act as a regularizer? From the picture it is probably clear and it is the same as the explanation I was trying to give to his question, right, that you are preventing yourself from entering in these regions and trying to enter into more favorable, stop at more favorable regions, right. But can you think of slightly more? in terms of what happens in gradient descent and what would happen if you stop it early and so on. Can you try to connect it to the update rule of gradient descent? What happens as you keep training it for more and more epochs? No, no. Gradient descent has nothing to do with validation error or backtracking. Gradient descent only works on the training data. Let us think in those terms. Gradient start diminishing to 0. So what happens, how does gradient descent progress? Where do you start? I start at a random point. At every epoch which is a collection of iterations, right or you go over many training points, what happens to this? I start moving, okay, I keep moving. Now if I fix the number of epochs or do not allow it to change any more after a number of epochs, what am I doing? I am restricting the boundary around the weight, right, I am not allowing it to grow beyond a certain boundary. Do you get that? Okay, let us see that. Uh, so we will first see an intuitive explanation and then go to a more mathematical analysis of that, right. So the update rule for gradient descent is, I always make this mistake, this has to be minus. Oh, the TAs have disappeared, okay, are they, oh he is there, sorry, sorry, okay. other two have disappeared, okay. Uh, so now what would actually happen at the tth step is, we have W naught, actually plus or minus does not matter, it just tells you that how much it is going to change. This is what is happening actually at the tth step, right. You have just subtracted all the previous derivatives that you had so far, right, from where you started off. Now you are looking at t steps, so at every point you are computing a certain gradient that had a certain magnitude, okay. Now let me say that across all these steps, the maximum gradient that you had, I will just call it by tau. So that means in these, this summation there are t terms, 
I am saying the maximum of those was tau. That was the maximum gradient that I got at any one point. Okay, you get that? Now what I am going to do after this? I am going to replace this by something. This summation is always going to be less than or equal to this, right? Because I am assuming that each of my steps is less than tau. There are t such steps, so I could have at max moved t into tau, right? But I would have moved less than that because tau was the maximum gradient that I had. Okay, so this is going to be less than equal to. Is that do you get the change from the equality to less than equal to? Okay. So now, what am I restricting actually in early stopping? What is being restricted? There are only so many symbols there, right? Just pick one. T tau is of course not in your hands. W not is not in your hands. W so T is the one, right? So I'm only allowing that many updates. So that means from W not you can only move that much. This looks. You see that analogy that this is something similar to not allowing the weights to really grow a lot, right? Is that fine? Okay. Now so now but we will not end here. We will of course do some more stuff on this, right? Okay. So we now see a mathematical analysis of this. So recall that a Taylor series approximation for L W is the following. The same thing which I wrote a few slides back or many slides back. Everyone remembers this, right? And now again, I'm going to do the same thing that. If I know the optimal W star, then the gradient at that point is going to be zero, so this term disappears. Okay, and now if I take the derivative, this is what will remain. This is exactly what we did earlier, also, right? So we'll have derivative of this and derivative of this. So derivative of this quantity is just this, and the derivative of this is zero because that's exactly what we started off with, right? That W star is the optimal solution. Everyone is fine with this, right? Okay. Now the SGD update rule is the following, okay, which I can write as this. I've just replaced this by this, okay. I'm just rearranging some terms. Is that okay? How many of you are fine with this? How many of you are just too tired to even care about this? I'm just raising my hand. Okay, so this is what WT would be. This is again some simple steps leading to some conclusion. The conclusion is what matters. The steps are very easy. You can go back and look at them, right? So, again, I'll use the EVD, the same trick that I did earlier, and it will give me this instead of H. Okay, again, I'll just do some uh, rearrangements, and actually, I can show that if I start with W not equal to zero, then W two is actually given by this quantity. Okay, and there's a proof of this in the appendix. You can go and look at it. Now. What does this look similar to? Rotation, diagonal, rotation. Exactly similar to the analysis that we did for L2 regularization, right? And in fact, if you can, you can show that if you compare this expression with the one we had for L2 regularization, right? This is the expression that we had for L2 regularization, right? Rotation, some scaling, and then again rotation, right? Then we can show that early stopping. Is actually equivalent to uh, L2 regularization if the following condition is satisfied. This doesn't mean much because God knows how you'll satisfy this condition, right? But all it's saying is that there is some equivalence, right, under certain conditions, and that was the intuition was also telling us that it's somehow preventing the weights from growing large, and it's doing this in this very convoluted way where this condition holds for it to be equivalent to L2 regularization. As I said. For you and me, it's going to be very hard to create this condition, right? How do I make sure that something like this is true, right? But that doesn't matter. What matters is that there is some equivalence between them. So when you're doing early stopping, it's not just a heuristic or a blind uh, thing that you're doing. You know that it's somehow related to L2 regularization. Hence, it you are doing it, and hence it also works in practice. Is that fine? Will that work for all of you? Okay. So the things to remember is that early stopping only allows t updates to the parameters. Ah, okay, this is the important thing, right? So okay, now if a parameter w corresponds to a dimension which is important for the loss, then what would this quantity be? The partial derivative of the loss with respect to that parameter. It's going to be. If there's a parameter, for example, let's take the Amir Khan example, right? That Whatever weight you give to whether the actor was Amir Khan or not, 
if that's very important because if that feature is on your loss completely changes and so on right if you don't learn the weight correctly that feature is very sensitive so for important features the loss would be very sensitive to the changes in the weights of these features is that intuition correct right that means this gradient would be large okay and if a parameter corresponds to a feature which is not important what would this derivative be small now what is the net effect of this you have some parameters which are important so the derivatives are large some parameters which are not important so the derivatives are going to be small and you are going to only allow t updates so what is going to happen the parameters which are important will end up getting effectively more updates right because each of these magnitudes was higher and you did t of those the parameters which are not important will end up getting effectively lesser movement right because each of these gradients was small and you did only t of those right so you again see this that it's a weird way of ensuring that your important parameters get more updates than your non important parameters right so it's very important to see these connections between these different regularization methods all of you are fine with this okay fine <laughs>